Hi everyone, and welcome back. In this video, we'll be exploring an important application of the integral test. To introduce that application, recall that we studied the convergence of this famous series, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, back in our overview video. There, we used what would turn out to be the integral test to show that this series converged. The series that you see here is an example of what we call a p-series. It's a series of the form 1 over n to the p, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Well, we can ask the same question about convergence for p-series in general. For which real numbers p does this series converge? By the end of this lesson, we'll have an answer to this question, and it will lead us to a brand new convergence test, the p-series test. Okay, we're trying to figure out which real numbers p we can put in this exponent to turn this guy into a convergent series. We know that p equals 2 will work, right? But what else? Well, one thing that we know is that if the series converges, the terms have to tend to 0, right? That's our test for divergence. It's a necessary condition for the series to converge. So maybe to get started, we should ask the question, for which values of p do these terms tend to 0? Well, with a bit of thought, you may realize that this will work for any positive power, right? If I have 1 over n to some positive power, then when n becomes large, this fraction is going to tend to 0. But what about negative powers? Hmm, I think negative powers might be a problem. Because if I have 1 over n to some negative power, I can flip the fraction upside down, and I get n to some positive power. Now that's going to tend to infinity when n becomes large. So let's write this down. If p is a negative number, then 1 over n to the p is going to tend to infinity when n tends to infinity. In particular, it's not tending to 0. So according to our test for divergence, this series is going to diverge. Okay, now there is one other situation where something goes horribly, horribly wrong, and that's when p is equal to 0. If p is 0, then a general term in our series, 1 over n to the p, is just 1 over n to the 0. It's 1. So our series is really 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, and so on. And of course, this series diverges. So let's write this down as well. If p is 0, then 1 over n to the p, well, it's always equal to 1, but in particular, it will tend to 1 when n tends to infinity the terms are not going to zero. So for the exact same reason, by the test for divergence, this series diverges. Okay, this just leaves us with the positive values of p. Which positive real numbers can we put here to get a convergent series? Well, we already know one example, right? If we set p equals 2, we get the series from our overview video, which we saw was convergent using the integral test. Huh, I wonder if the integral test will work for other values of p. Let's give it a try. We're going to assume here that p is positive, and we'll consider the function f of x equals 1 over x to the p. Now, if we want to use the integral test, we have to make sure that our function is eventually continuous, positive, and decreasing. And of course, we're only concerned with x values between 1 and infinity. So let's think here. Is this function going to be continuous on 1 to infinity? Yes, it will. The only place where a discontinuity will arise is at x equals 0, and that's not a value that we're concerned with. So yes, this function is nice and continuous. Is it positive? Again, the answer is yes. Since x is positive, x to the p will be positive. Therefore, 1 over x to the p will be positive. Finally, is our function decreasing? It is. Since p is positive, the function x to the p is increasing for positive inputs x. Think root x, or x squared, or x cubed. This is an increasing function. And therefore, 1 over x to the p is a decreasing function. So our function is continuous, positive, and decreasing on the interval 1 to infinity. The assumptions of the integral test are satisfied. We can therefore analyze the convergence of this series by checking the convergence of the related improper integral. All right, so to test the convergence of our series, we need to test the convergence of this improper integral. The function that I'm integrating is x to the minus p. So its antiderivative should be x to the minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1. And I evaluate from 1 to infinity. Well, hold on a second. It could be the case that p is 1, 
in which case we have the function 1 over x. The antiderivative in that case would be a little bit different than what we have here. So we'll have to consider that case separately. This works assuming that p is not equal to 1. Assuming this is the case, my next step is to evaluate this expression using the given bounds. So I need to compute a limit, right? The limit as t goes to infinity of t to the minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1 minus 1 over minus p plus 1. The question is, when is this expression a finite number? Well, let's think about this. If I'm letting this variable t go off to infinity and I want the expression to be finite, this exponent has to be less than or equal to zero. If it's a positive exponent, this is just going to blow up to infinity. Notice, however, that if the exponent were equal to zero, then p would be equal to one. But we've assumed that that's not the case. So really, in this situation, the only way I'm going to be able to get a convergent integral is if my exponent is strictly negative. The integral converges if and only if minus p plus one is negative, or equivalently, p is bigger than one. Well, this is fantastic. We've just learned that our series, one over n to the p, is gonna converge when p is two, three, five, 6.5, any number you want bigger than one. The only case left to check is when p is equal to one. In this case, we can still use the integral test, right? The assumptions are still satisfied. We're just gonna have a different antiderivative. The antiderivative of one over x is ln of the absolute value of x. And we evaluate this from one to infinity. Again, I have a limit. The limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t minus ln of 1. Well, ln of 1 is 0, and ln of t is going to blow up to infinity. So my integral diverges here, and therefore my series diverges as well. Note that when we set p equal to 1, we're actually talking about the harmonic series, right? The sum of 1 over n from n equals 1 to infinity. We saw earlier that that series diverges, but our argument was based on partial sums. Now we have a new proof of that fact using the integral test. Putting everything together from the last couple slides, we conclude that our series converges exactly when the exponent p is bigger than 1. I'm going to state this again as a new convergence test on the next slide. It turns out that what we just proved is actually a pretty useful fact, and so we're going to record it here as a brand new series convergence test the p-series test. It tells us that this series, the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p, will converge when p is bigger than 1 and will diverge if p is less than or equal to 1. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh come on Zach, this is such a specific type of series. How useful could this p-series test really be? It only tells us about the convergence for series of this form. Well you are absolutely right. The test itself is actually quite limited. However, in many cases, when dealing with a more complicated series, there are ways to compare it to a simpler series, such as a p-series or a geometric series. Sometimes, if you know whether the simpler series converges, which is what this p-series test might tell us, we can deduce whether or not the more complicated series converges. That'll be the topic of our next lesson, the comparison test.